Hi. Welcome, welcome. I am so glad you're here. I'm Kelly Pitts, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Lubbock, Texas. And I have been doing this for almost about 18 years. So it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> I have a blog at createwithkelly.com where I'll give you more details on cards, card making like this and techniques. And I kind of held classes for beginners and intermediate stampers and also advanced techniques classes. So I have all kinds of things coming up. So if you're interested in finding out more about those, you can go to my blog at createwithkelly.com and click on calendar. That's like my website and my blog and everything. So if you click on calendar and events, it will take you there and let you know what all I have coming up this month. I hope y'all are having a great weekend. And I have been working on the PDF tutorials for all the cards that we made at my retreat last weekend. We had such a fun time. We had 10 people here making 16 different cards. Woo! That was a lot of prep, but it was a lot of fun. So it made it worthwhile. It was great. Really enjoyed being together with everyone. So I'm sharing those cards with you so you can make them at home, which we all love to do. <laughs> Share the inspiration. I will go ahead and get started. I have some Stampin' Up! related announcement kind of things that I'll share at the end, but I'll go ahead and give you an idea here real quickly of what we did at the retreat while we're kind of waiting for folks to come on board here. And you're welcome to watch on YouTube anytime, Facebook anytime. You can watch live. You can watch the replay. I'm happy to have you. So excuse me here are the 16 cards that we made one of them is kind of covered up in the corner sorry about that and it was a really pretty one but i'll be showing you that soon i will go ahead and get back to my regular screen there and we'll get going i don't know if sunday afternoon is a good time i've been trying to figure out what is a good time to do these videos it seems like saturday morning when i usually do them i have a lot of conflicts so we will we'll just see the main stamp set we're using on the card today is the Marion Bright stamp set. And that number is 161946 if y'all are interested in purchasing this. But I would recommend the bundle that includes the dies and that way you save 10%. And let's see if I have the bundle number right here. There's a whole suite that has all the paper and everything. And that's what I got. I used a lot of the items from the suite which is number 161956 and if you want just the bundle with the dies and the stamp set that is 161951 and that's on page let's see page nine of the holiday mini catalog from Stampin' Up! so that's the main thing we used and I also for these little scalloped contours. Let me show you those up close. Isn't that a cute card? Love that different kind of non-traditional Christmas colors there with the pink and green. That's kind of a play off of, off of the typical red and green that's usually a lot darker. It's hard for you to pick up the gorgeous foil there that's Melon Mambo and Granny Apple. There you, there you can. You can kind of get a flash of it. See how pretty that foil is? Isn't that gorgeous? It's just been a lot of fun cutting out those light bulbs this size and the larger size out of this foil paper. So the scalloped contour dies is number 155560. And this has been in our annual catalog a while, but they are so versatile. This came as a bundle originally with the color and contour set, which is still, I believe, in. It's just not a bundle anymore. So that's what we use today. Those are the main items. And we shall get started on our card. So I want this to be a quick tutorial for those who purchased this class to go or purchase just the tutorial. Besides all of our wonderful, my wonderful customers who came and team members who came to the actual event. We just had such a big time and we made cards Friday night and all day Saturday, which was lots of fun. Try to get this where y'all can see without losing everything here. 
And this is just your typical eight and a half by five and a half cardstock scored at four and a quarter. And this is Melon Mambo. Then I have already die cut for us the Marion Bright. Uh, let's see, scallop contour die for that layer. And I meant to punch something out. So we're just going to do that real quickly. If I can find my punch here. I'm going to do a couple of these. So I have these for another card. I hate wasting paper like this. I don't, I, I just can't do it. So I'm going to stick this. Ooh, that might not come in far enough to be covered with that scallop. So I better choose another punch for that. Let's see. Let's just get one of these big ones. Like this. Let's see if I can get that far enough in. No. Well, that might be why I didn't do it. But you could certainly die cut something out of it. We're not today because we're just trying to make this card quickly. But I would take something out of the center of that if you can get to it to do that. And instead of wasting all that in the middle. But today, I guess we're going to be wasteful. <laughs> Doesn't hurt every once in a while, I guess. Although it pains me to do so. <laughs> All right, we're just going to use liquid glue. You could use your stamping seal, whatever you prefer, to get that, get your gluing done. And I always use my silicone mat for, so I don't make as big of a mess. I'm just a messy stamper. That's all there is to it. There we go. There's our scalloped contour rectangle. And let me see what else we can do before we get started. I think that's all we can do until we move on to stamping, which will be next. Well, we'll just go ahead and glue our little light bulbs. We're going to, and when I, I would recommend when you're cutting for these, I was cutting a jillion of them. So I, uh, oops, I accidentally hit my little mouse pad there elbows on it <laughs> oh shoot i should make this larger sorry peeps y'all just be sure and comment when you come in i'd love to know who's watching and who you are and where you're from oh it's kathy winters hello good to see you kathy glad you could join and just remind me if i get off camera or something i get to chatting <laughs> and forget to look okay when you are cutting out, if you're doing multiples of anything, especially with the foil, I would go ahead and cut as many as you plan to make. Cut the, like, pile up a bunch of these different dies. There's two each of these, the little bases for the, for the bulbs. So you could, you could have, like, one piece of silver and cut a bunch of these out, if that makes sense. And you'll get the little cute little cord like this you can do that one and that cuts it actually cuts two different ones that I does so just be mindful when you're doing the foil do several at once and go ahead and put adhesive sheet on the back of your foil and that'll be much easier especially for these small pieces like this yikes because you don't want to get liquid glue on the front of your foil it really kind of dulls it so that's what I would recommend. And we're going to just use some glue dots. Hopefully I didn't misplace those. Oh, I found them. Yay. And we're going to just put a glue dot on the top of this right here. Twist it off. Add our little base. I tried calling it a socket, but I, when I looked up light bulbs, this showed that that's the base. But of course, it's usually down and not up like we're going to have it on our, our card. But whatever. You can call it whatever you'd like. So I just put a glue dot at the top and that is plenty strong to hold that together. Then we're going to use, I did not have time to do the adhesive sheets on all these before my class. So I'm going to check real quick and see if I did that. If you do glue the adhesive sheet to the back of your foil, you'll be able to just peel the peel the backing off and stick this without having to use glue. But I don't believe I did it on these. Woo, that's a little bit too much. Hang on. We're going to borrow a little bit of that over here. 
don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm just getting a little tiny bit of glue on each part of this if I can. So I don't smear it. Whoop. Hang on to it. And then you can just kind of tuck that underneath that base. And really, you want to just get it and stick it on there. Even if it's crooked, that's better than having it. It's better to have it crooked than to have your foil smeared. And this would probably be a lot better with tweezers. I just never learned to craft with tweezers. I didn't, didn't really start that way like a lot of people using tweezers all the time. So I just use my fingers. So whatever works for you. See, I got a little too much glue right there, but I'm just going to try to pop that up and not move this so I don't slide the whole thing. And that's just like a wet paper towel. We'll see how that works. We'll dry that off with the Kleenex. There we go. That's pretty good. I wish y'all could see that gorgeous foil. You'll see it on the card like I did. Well, like, there you go. Whoops. Isn't that pretty? It's so full, shiny and sparkly. And the silver is from the holographic trio that we have in the foil papers. We don't have just a plain silver, silver foil. We just have that trio. So we've got this part ready to do on the front. Now we need to do our stamping for the front. And I've already cut another size scalloped rectangle here. And I don't know if I've been saying rectangle. Let's see how we can get this where you can see better. Maybe that will work. There we go. Hopefully that'll work. Okay. And I we could use Granny Apple Green or we're going to try going with the Lemon Lime Twist. It's a little bit brighter. We'll see what we think. I'm going to stamp the Have A. I think I'm going to try to put these in my lap. I've got so many to choose from here. I'm going to put this just on a piece of scratch paper. Well, we're just going to do it. We want it over toward the right, and this can be kind of toward the top. We're going to say have a, see it's brighter than the granny apple green. And I went over this one with a marker. It's nice that it's dark, so it shows up, but I just wanted it a little bit brighter. So that's why we're trying this. Now we're going to do the melon mambo for the other part. I love these little greetings that you can cut them apart. You'll see that on several of the cards that I did at the retreat. I'll be posting blog posts and videos of all 16 of those cards. And on this, this particular stamp set, you do kind of need to do a little more than your usual tap, tap, tap. You need to really make sure the top edge and the bottom edge are coated and watch out for getting it on the, on the block that way. It's easy to get on the block, but we're not usually doing anything that large and, oh, I inked up the same one twice. Hopefully I didn't get green ink in there, but I probably did. Dang it. I forgot. I didn't clean that one like I should have. Okay. That was supposed to be Mary. We've already got the have a, so you can kind of make what you want out of this little, I'm going to move this a little closer so I can see it better. Have a Mary. Clean it, Kelly, so you don't do that again. And bright. We're going to go back to our lemon lime twist on this one. Trying to keep those out of the way. Hope y'all are having a great weekend. Mary. And bright. All right, back to the Melon Mambo. 
and we're going with Christmas. So the stamp set has several different greetings that are all done like this with the solid background and then the top is reversed out of it. So it's a lot of fun to play with. Merry and bright Christmas. Yay. Easy peasy. Okay, now let's set that aside and we're going to do our inside. And we're going to do Holly Jolly. And if y'all watched my video this morning, I've already, no, that was yesterday. Goodness gracious. I don't know. I think it was yesterday. We're going to ink up just the holly part. I'm going to get a little closer so y'all can tell exactly what I'm doing. I'm trying to just hit it on the holly and not on the jolly part. Then I'm going to turn it over and look, make sure I've got it coated, and then that it's not on the J, and I don't think it is. So we're going to leave room over on the edge for the jolly over here and then our bulbs here. So now we're going to clean that off. And we're going to do, yes, you guessed it. We're going to do just the opposite. We're going to do pink over here on the jolly. Hopefully y'all can see this. You'll do a better job if this is flat on the table, but I'm trying to get it where y'all can see the detail here. Get that off of the, the uh, Y there. Now you're going to line it up with the holly like we had before as best you can. Hard to see with the camera right here. Holly Jolly. There we have it. Okay. Get that one cleaned off with our handy little chamois. And we'll go for the bulbs. We're going to stamp the Melon Mambo. Let's see, did I do the, I think I did the bulb first and then did the base. So we've got that cute little bulb and Melon Mambo. Which kind of lights do y'all use at Christmas on your tree? Do you use a different one on the inside than the outside? Do y'all use this top or the rounder, bigger bulb on your Christmas tree? Ours are like this, the long skinny ones, and we have gone to all white bulbs because I have so many different colors of ornaments, and they it seems like they show up better than with the colored lights, so we kind of changed how I do that. All right, but we're going to keep these for a while because we bought a tree with them pre-lit a few years ago and it's just been awesome not to have to restring those every time. Okay, now we're going to use the little glow. I call these the glow rays or the glow stamp because <laughs> it makes the light bulb look like it's glowing when you stamp that. And I think we'll stamp, I might want to stamp that off. Just going to get some scratch paper here. Stamp that off so it won't be, well, uh, this is pretty light anyway. We'll see. That's very light. We're going to go back, see if we can go over that. I don't think that's going to be quite dark enough to make me happy. Hopefully that will work. It's kind of a little off, but okay. And then the Melon Mambo. We definitely want to stamp that off. And are you all of the opinion? I kind of think that when the light bulb glows, it glows in the same color. I've seen several of these cards that use yellow on the little glow marks for every color, but I don't know about that. I don't know if that should be, if it should be a yellow glow for all colors of bulbs or if it should just be a lighter shade of that bulb. What do y'all think? You know, those who are watching live or on the replay would love to know that. 
Okay. We've got that done. I'm going to, let's see. Just, I need a, one extra table right around me. <laughs> all the time. I kind of use all the room I have always. All right. Let's see. We're going to use the top. We're going to do, I cannot, for the life of me, find my basic gray pad. I don't know if I loaned it out or didn't put it in the right spot after a class or what happened, but right now I don't have it. So we're going to use Smoky Slate, which is what I used on this sample, but you could certainly go basic gray or you could actually emboss it in silver if you want. But today on the card, this is a fairly simple one. So we're just going to do this, and I'm not sure how at a class this turned this brown, dark brown color. Beats me how that happened. We may have to turn that over. That is not very dark. Or either I'm going to get my marker out. I think my smoky slate needs to be re-inked. We're going to have to do that one more time. I didn't use enough pressure on it. Now we've got the double double vision again. We may have to do this over on the other side. I'll fix it with the marker a bit. Okay, do we need anything else on the front? No. I think we're done with our stamping. Yay. Easy, easy. I told you it was an easy card. Or this is what I call a simple card. <laughs> Not everybody might agree. Oh no, we've got to do our little cord. I thought there was one more step. All right, we're going to use our smoky slate again. And I don't have that mounted. That's why we, I didn't think of it. And you could probably just use a marker and draw it just about as easily. But we're going to get a big, big, big block, which are all put up. Let's see what I can reach over here and it takes quite a big block so you can see this was used for that class too and it turned it brown have y'all ever had a stamp turn that color I've had them turn pink you know from the red pigment but not ever that color so I don't know what that deal was all right we're just going to use this little straight part of the core yeah, I'm calling it a cord, string, string of lots, cord of lots, whatever you want to call it. And we're just going to go, it kind of seems to work that whenever you put this over your little doohickeys right here, that it looks like it's through that cord. And I don't know how that always works, but it seems to. All right, I don't want to mess up our holly jolly over there. So, trying to see what the best angle is. Let's see if I like this one. Kind of did those at a funky angle. Nope. Okay. Well, I should have done the cord first. Good, good clue for y'all. We're going to get a marker and I'm just going to draw it in. Just going to take this, make a little cord like that. That works. Now we're going to fill this in. Kind of had a hairy, hairy little cord there. <laughs> okay not perfect but it works we'll see how it dries and probably blends would be better but hopefully this will look intentional make it a little more artsy 
right? What do y'all think of that? Now we'll do the little filaments on the inside and we will be done with the stamping. Like I thought we were a while ago, but we weren't. <laughs> Okay, let's do same thing on the filaments. I would do the same color. I would just do Melon Mambo on the Melon Mambo, so it's tone on tone, but it'll be darker because it's smaller. If you have a finer line like this, it's going to go darker than something that's spread out over a larger area, if that makes sense. Okay, and we'll get that cleaned off. Switch back to our lemon lime twist, or we could even go granny apple green. We're just going to stick with the lemon lime twist. There you have it. Now we have those inside. Now it really looks like a little Christmas light bulb, doesn't it? And I don't know if y'all left it in the comments. Be sure and do that and let me know if y'all which kind of lights you like. If you like the bulbs like this on your tree or you like the traditional older, rounder kind of bulbs. They're not round, but rounded. You know what I mean? Just curious to know what y'all like. All right, we have the inside done and ready to mount this on the inside of the card. Then you can use liquid glue, stamp and seal, whatever makes you happy. Just get that where you've got an even border all the way around this piece of Basic white is four by five and a quarter with our holly jolly and our lights inside. And then we're going to pop this up on the front. And it'd probably be easier to do that other first. Let's do that. Let's get this on here first. And then we'll pop the whole thing up. Those have had time to dry. We're just going to put our little pink and green lights on and I'm going to run this through oops, that way and that way kind of figure out where I want it to land see if I like that or if I want it to come further down no I think I want it to go about right there that's about right Maybe even like that. That would be cute. Okay. And I'm going to put, start over here. And I'm just going underneath. I know it's going to be, let me see if I can get this at another angle so y'all can see better. I'm just going to move that little piece of foil up. A little string. See if I can get my glue working again. And you can actually put it on the foil piece or you can put it on the paper. Just decide where you want it first and then press that down. And if you're going to attach these, then you don't have to do all these little details. But I kind of like for these to float and move a little bit. So now we've got that attached. I'm going to hold this up and I need to hold that green there. I'm going to put a little bit of green, a little bit of glue in between those bulbs and stick that down. Hold that for a sec. Then we're going to come up here while I'm holding that. I might as well glue this one. Just put a little glue on the back. You don't want a whole ton because it 
mars the surface of the foil if you get glue on there it doesn't look as good but you can try to wipe it off with an alcohol wipe or wet wipe or something if you get to it pretty quickly and then we're just going to snip that off right at that scallop. And if that's not exactly right, you can put a little more glue, lift that up just a little bit more and put that right where you want it. Just a teeny tiny bit of glue there. All right, and now we have our little light bulbs kind of captured in this area but they're still kind of loose. So there you go. That's all there is to that. And then you can save that and use it on another one of these cards if you'd like. We're going to pop this up with dimensionals. We'll just put a couple in the middle too so this whole panel is popped up and put that on the front of our card how fun is that what do y'all think do you like the lemon lime twist this is the lemon lime twist on the hava and bright and this is the granny apple green they both go with that grainy apple green paper. I think they're both pretty. This one is just fits the bright a little more, I think. And I meant to do the glow on here, but it's hard to get it without it hanging off that edge. And I didn't think it would stamp well over the little dot. So there's your card. How fun. Pretty cute and simple. That's how you make it. So tune in for more videos, or if you're interested in the PDF tutorial, I will be selling that for those interested for the tutorial for all 16 cards. So just let me know. Send me an email. Hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you'll share with your crafty friends. Bye.